Today we like to point out a few features of the skull that can help us doing the test. First of all, we look at the frontal bone. That's this entire bone right here. That's the frontal bone in the front of us. The frontal bone stops where the coronal suture is. Here we see the superciliary arches where the eyebrows go, both sides. And in between we have the glabella, which means hairless. This here we call the orbit of the eye. The frontal bone is part of it. When we move more posterior, we have two parietal bones on either side of the skull. They are joined via a sagittal suture in the midline of our head. At the end of the sagittal suture, we start the occipital bone, and on its side it is demarcated by the lambdoid suture, right here. The occipital bone has a few very, very important features. Number one, we have the foramen magnum. Next to the foramen magnum, we have two occipital condyles. And then as we move posterior, on the back of the head, we feel a fairly blunt piece, the, the bluntest process that we can feel, is the insertion of the trapezius muscle, and that's called the external occipital protuberance, or EOP. Then we take the skull and we look from the side where we have the ear canal and the cheekbone right here. So that's the temporal bone right in this area. The suture that, that um, <coughs> separates it mainly from the temp uh, parietal bone is the squamosal suture or squamous suture. Where we see here the cheek, that first portion of the cheek, you can see right here about here where the suture is, that's called the, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. The ear canal is the external auditory meatus. And right next to the ear canal we have a mastoid process. So that's right behind posterior to the ear canal. We go a little bit anterior to the ear canal, we have a shallow sort of fossa, and what happens in that fossa is we get the mandible to come in and make a joint, right here. And so that fossa in here is known as the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. One landmark that we have missing on this side here, but it is present on this side, and that's the styloid process that's also on the temporal bone. The last features of the temporal bone are on the inside. So let's take the skull that we opened right here. We have the front here and the top here. So this is the front of the top, this is the back of the top. We're looking at the temporal bone, so we're looking right in this area in here. And the piece here that I want to point out is the petrous portion. That's a little ridge like structure in the inside of the skull. Inside here, we have the inner ear as well as the apparatus for balancing. And while we're here, we can just stick with this uh, view right here because the next bone is the sphenoid bone. And sphenoid means wedge. So this bone is wedged in between right in here, going from once the left side to the right side of the skull. The bone is right inside here with this interesting piece in the middle, and then it goes all the way over here. The interesting piece in the middle is called the cella torsica, Turkish saddle. The pituitary gland sits in here. The bottom portion when we take this bone out, we can see it. We call that the greater wing. And the top ridge right here, that's the lesser wing, all of the sphenoid bone. And then one feature on the sphenoid bone that we do have 
looking from underneath, I'll take the real skull here again, to so see it, underneath we have the teeth, the upper row of the teeth, and right behind the teeth we have these two things sticking down here, these processes, they come down. And those are the pterygoid processes, the pterygoid processes. They uh, have muscles attached to them that help us with chewing. Lastly, but not leastly, we have the ethmoid bone. And the ethmoid bone is a bone that sits inside the nasal area, inside the nose. A few features of the ethmoid bone is, as we are inside the nose here, there's these little turbinate things on the side. You can sort of make it out right in here. That's a turbinate thing here. That's a concha. We have the superior and the middle concha, or part of the ethmoid bone. The inferior nasal concha, which you can see are pretty big down in here, that's a bone on its own right. When we open the calvary up, on the inside, we have a few more pieces that come and stick up onto the inside of the skull, but they are part of the ethmoid bone. The tip here is the crista galli. And these little holes in here are part of the cribriform plate that surrounds the Christogoli like that. All right, so this gets us to the facial bones. And the first facial bone I'd like to touch on is the maxillary bone. The maxillary bone is basically our upper teeth bone, where our upper teeth come in. We have a few features that we like. The alveolar margins are the teeth sockets. We have that on the maxilla for the upper teeth. And then on the mandible, we have an alveolar margin for the lower teeth. When we turn this up a little bit, what we see underneath, the roof of the mouth, the first portion, is known as the palatine process. We see a cross-jagged line here. That tells us this back here is a different bone. That's the palatine bone. And together, they make up the hard palate. The cheekbone is right here. That's known as the zygomatic bone that then connects posteriorly with the temporal bone. The nasal bone is right here, the bridge of the nose. That's the nasal bone. And then lastly, we come to the lower jaw bone that sticks in here. Remember, we have it stick in the temporal bone via the mandibular fossa. So we take that off and what we can see here we have a few processes. This here is a mandibular conduct. That's going to make the connection with the temporal bone. This peaky thing here is the coronoid process. That's an attachment side for a very powerful temporalis muscle that will close the jaw. Then this side here is called the ramus. And the round piece in the front is known as the body of the mandible. And again, on the mandible, we also have alveolar margins for the lower teeth 